Air travel is one of the most essential industries in the world. Every day, there are roughly 100,000 commercial flights that take off carrying about 6 million people to various destinations for various reasons. But whether these flights carry passengers or cargo, it is essential for these planes to reach as many parts of the world as possible. Unfortunately, the terrain in certain places prevents runways from being built. But because of the necessity, they are built anyway, making for some incredibly dangerous takeoffs and landings. One slight mistake by the pilots could spell disaster. Here are five of the most dangerous airports in the world. There are plenty of things that make a runway dangerous for pilots to land on. Most of the time, it's either the surrounding terrain or the length of the actual runway. However, at the Madeira International Airport in Portugal, pilots tread carefully because of the runway's construction. As a matter of fact, the runway that exists today isn't even the original runway. When it was first constructed, it was only 1,600 meters long, which is just under a mile. In terms of runways, this is incredibly short. Then, you have to take geography into account. On one side of the runway are high mountains. On the other side is the ocean. To top it all off, there are consistently high winds. It is the combination of these elements that caused the plane to crash in 1977. The Boeing 727 fell off the end of the runway onto the beach below, taking the lives of 164 people. It was decided at the time to construct an extension of the runway to allow airplanes more room to take off and land. The only problem was that the runway ended at the edge of the ocean, so engineers designed a runway bridge. This runway bridge or extension goes right over a section of sea and is supported by 180 columns. These columns have to withstand the incredible shock that's put on them when these humongous planes land. This unique construction mixed with the high winds and dangerous geography make it one of the most dangerous airports in the world to land at. In order to land here, pilots have to undergo additional training. Nepal is a country that is both incredibly isolated and very high up. With much of the country situated within the Himalayan mountains, it leaves very little room for any sort of an airport. But because of how isolated many of the villages are and the importance of receiving supplies, something had to be done. So builders constructed the Tenzing Hillary Airport, one of the most technically challenging and fear-inducing airports in the world. Also known as Lukla Airport, it is also frequented by travelers who aspire to climb Mount Everest. So, as you could probably imagine, the airport is surrounded on all sides by the steep Himalayan terrain, with a mountain shelf on one side and a steep drop into the valley on the other. So, even navigating into this area is a challenge by itself. However, the danger doesn't stop there. The airport runway is extremely short, measuring only 527 meters or 1,739 feet long. Given these various factors, only helicopters and small fixed-wing propeller planes are permitted to land. In actuality, they're about the only planes that could land. The small runway presents incredible challenges. For planes looking to land, it leaves little room to stop. For planes that are looking to take off, it is very difficult to gain enough speed to produce lift. So, in order to help counter these difficulties, the runway had to be constructed with a slope. With a gradient of 12%, pilots now have a bit of extra room to take off. But these pilots only have one chance at hitting their mark, as there are no go-around procedures. It can only be attacked from one direction and one direction only. And once you're committed, there's no going back. Since 1973, there have been several accidents at this airport that have resulted in numerous injuries and deaths. The French Alps are known worldwide for having some of the best ski slopes. People travel from near and far to enjoy time in the snow and take in the amazing scenery of the jagged and snow-capped peaks. But just like in Nepal, some parts of the French Alps are nearly impossible to reach, making the need for an airport very high. 
So the Courchevel Airport was built. Just like the Tenzing Hillary Airport in Nepal, it is incredibly difficult to get to and even harder to land on. Nearly every dangerous element that exists for the airport in Nepal also exists for this one in France. The runway is 525 meters or 1,722 feet long, it is surrounded by mountains on every side, and there is a cliff at the end of the runway. Also mirroring its counterpart in Nepal, the runway was built on a slope. However, the gradient of the slope is 18.6 degrees, giving pilots even more uphill or downhill help depending on whether they're taking off or landing. So many dangerous factors exist here that only a handful of pilots are permitted to land. There is only one thing that separates this airport from its twin in Nepal, though. During takeoffs and landings, pilots have to maneuver their aircraft between the monstrous Alps without the assistance of their onboard instruments. Everything is done visually. The only directive that exists is the no-go-around rule, meaning that the runway can only be approached and departed from in one direction. As pilots spend the vast majority of their time relying on their instruments, this added element greatly narrows down the field of qualified people to operate here. Various Caribbean islands are known for having dangerous airports. One of the most famous is located on the island of St. Martin, where the runway begins only four feet from a public beach. Even though that presents its own challenge, it doesn't compare to the Wancho E. Irausquin Airport that was built on the minuscule island of Saba, which is about 28 miles off St. Martin. The island is small enough as it is, leaving little room for an airport. But, as we have previously seen, where there is a will, there is a way. So, an airport was built. Guancho Airport is known for having the world's shortest commercial runways, much shorter than the ones located in France and Nepal. Here, the runway only measures 400 meters, or 1,300 feet in length. The typical airport runway for commercial airlines measure anywhere between 8,000 and 13,000 feet long. That means that only certain aircraft can land here after they have waivers from the Netherlands Antilles Civil Aviation Authority. It's hard enough for pilots to use every single inch of runway available to them, but here they have to do it while surrounded by rocky outcrops and sharp drop-offs into the ocean. So there is absolutely no margin for error. One false move and you're either crashing into the side of the mountain or sliding off the end of the runway into the sea below. The only reprieve that the pilots have is the ability for go-around procedures. Bhutan is a small, isolated country located just east of Nepal and north of Bangladesh in Asia. Just like Nepal, there is little room for airports here due to the towering Himalayan mountains. But in order to get critical supplies here, one was built. The Paro International Airport. In actuality, it is the only international airport in the entire country. Incidentally, it is also the world's most dangerous airport. This time, though, it isn't due to a short runway. Paro International Airport was built in a deep valley, one of the only places with enough room for a runway and terminal. Strong winds whip through the valley, often resulting in severe turbulence. There have been a few planes that have crashed as a result of the wind, but the wind isn't the only thing posing a danger here. The mountains completely hide the runway on approach. Pilots have to navigate a series of turns through the mountains in order to get the proper approach for landing. The runway only comes into sight just before the wheels touch down. Because of these dangerous factors, a rule has been put into place which restricts pilots from taking off or landing at night. The undulating terrain, unpredictable weather patterns, and nearly 45-degree drop-off just before landing render the aircraft's instruments useless. So, everything is done with visual cues. Only a limited number of pilots in the world are authorized to land at Para. We are light years ahead of where we used to be in terms of safety when it comes to aviation. Safety protocols and huge advancements in technology make a commercial airplane one of the safest and most reliable means of transportation. But when it comes to airports, all bets are off. Technology takes a back seat to human skill. To see another video just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. 
As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.